Year 13 Revision Short Revision Video 1. So we're starting with a trigonometric integral. We need to eat, integrate each part separately. So starting with 1, obviously this integrates to give us x. And then we have cos. And we know that cos of x integrates to give us sine of x. So this will integrate to give us sine of a half x. But we need to divide by the derivative of the inner function, where the inner function is the half x. And of course, the derivative of a half x is a half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So we have a plus 2 in front of the sign a half x. Essentially, we are using integration by substitution here, but we're doing it using the quick format. You could think of it as a generalized rule that the integral of cos ax plus b is equal to 1 over a sine ax plus b, plus a constant, of course. So cos integrates to sine of the same function, but you divide by the derivative of the inner function here. Now, we must make sure, of course, that we substitute in our limits as well. So let's do that. So substituting in our upper limit, first of all, we're going to get pi by 2 plus 2 sine pi by 4. And our lower limit in both parts evaluates to give us 0. So we can discount that. So this then gives us pi by 2 plus 2 multiplied by root 2 over 2. So the final answer is pi by 2 plus root 2. So we have another integral here. And we have a product. So we can think about integrating this by parts. If we split this up here. Now, integrating ln x or ln of x is tricky. It's complicated, but we can differentiate it very easily. So it makes sense for u to equal ln of x, which means that du by dx will equal 1 over x very easily. We then need to make sure we write down dv by dx. So dv by dx is going to equal the other portion, which is x to the minus a half. And integrating to give us v will give us x to the power of a half. And then dividing by that new power will be the same as dividing by a half, which means multiply by 2. So we have all of the portions that we need. So this portion here was our dv by dx, and this portion here was our u. So our integration by parts formula tells us that the integral of u multiplied by dv by dx dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du by dx, or with respect to x. Now this integral has limits as well, so I will deal with those at the end of the integral. So I'm going to think of it as the integral like this without limits, so an indefinite integral first of all. So we want uv first of all, so this part over here, so that's the product of these two functions over here. It makes sense to write the 2x to the half first of all for neatness, and then we want ln of x. Now at the very end we're substituting in positive limits of 1 and 4 into that, so we're not really going to need to worry about a modulus sign here minus the integral of, and then we've got this portion over here, v times du by dx. So that's the product of this pair of functions over here. So I'm going to pull the 2 outside the integral sign. So it's just a multiplicative factor. We have x to the half, and then we have 1 over x, all with respect to x. And as I said earlier, I'll put the limits and I'll substitute in the limits at the very end of my integration. So simplifying this, we have 2x to the half ln x, again, for this portion here. And then we have the integral of 2x to the minus a half dx. And we can then integrate the second portion here. So raising the power by 1, it's going to become x to the power of a half, dividing by the new power of a half, same as multiplying by 2. So we'll end up with a 4 here. And of course, we need to make sure we put in our limits at the end of all this, because the integral was in terms 
of a pair of limits. It was a definite integral. And so we need to make sure we give our answer in an exact form. So don't just substitute this into your calculator and hope for the best. So substituting in x equals 4, we've got 2 multiplied by, now, 4 to the power of a half is a square root of 4 or 2, ln 4, minus 4 multiplied by 4 to the power of a half again over here, which is just 2, subtract. Now, when we input our lower limit into this portion over here, well, ln of 1 is equal to 0, so that will give us a 0 for that. Now, for the next part, we've got 4 multiplied by 1 to the power of a half. 1 to the half is 1, so it's subtract a 4 like that. We can then just simplify this. So this gives me 4 ln 4 minus 8 minus minus 4. So my final answer will be 4 ln 4 subtract 4. So we now have a more extensive question with multiple parts to it. So we have the curve y equals x over the square root of x plus 4 and the line x equals 5. And the curve has an asymptote l which you can see dotted on the left there. The tangent to the curve at the origin crosses the line l at p and the line x equals 5 at q. So part one we've got to show that for this curve, dy by dx is given by this result over here. So the first part of this is all about differentiation. So we can see very clearly y equals x over the root of x plus 4. This is a quotient function. So we can identify u and we can identify v very easily. So u is equal to x, which means du by dx is equal to 1. And v is equal to the root of x plus 4, which I will write as x plus 4 to the power of a half. So dv by dx, we can use the quick chain rule here. It's a power type function, so multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1, and then multiply by the inner function differentiated. And of course, the derivative of the inner function, x plus 4, is just 1, so you're just multiplying by 1. Now, dy by dx is equal to v multiplied by du by dx minus u multiplied by dv by dx all divided by v squared. So let's work this through. v multiplied by du by dx is over here. It's the product of these two functions. And that just gives us x plus 4 to the power of a half. We're subtracting from that u multiplied by dv by dx. So that's a half x, x plus 4 to the power of negative a half. And then the whole thing is divided by v squared. Now, if you square the v function, you simply get x plus 4, simply. Now, we can see that the final answer over here is further simplified. So because there's a common factor of x plus 4 here, here, and here, what we're going to do is we're going to divide each part in the numerator by x plus 4. So we're going to end up with x plus 4 to the power of minus a half, because of course the power in the denominator is 1. Subtract a half x, x plus 4, to the minus 3 over 2. Now, we're then going to take out a factor of a half x plus 4, to the negative 3 over 2 and factorize and that's going to give me 2 bracket x plus 4 over here imagine that's to the power of 1 so you can see how negative 3 over 2 and 1 will add to give you the power of negative a half and then over here that's just going to be subtract x now simplify the contents of the large square bracket And you're going to get 2x subtract x, which is x, and then 2 multiplied by 4, which is 8. And then we're pretty much here. We just need to tidy up our answer so it looks like the one in the question. x plus 8 over 2 bracket x plus 4 to the power of 3 over 2. So part 2, find the coordinates of the point P. Now, we can see that P is where the tangent to the curve at the origin meets the vertical asymptote 
on the left hand side. Now this vertical asymptote is for this curve here. You can see that the undefined value is going to occur when x is equal to negative 4 because that's when you'll get a 0 in the denominator. So over here that's going to be negative 4 and that line is going to be x equals negative 4, the asymptote. Now let's focus our attention on this tangent here PQ which is a tangent to the curve at the origin O. So we know that at the point O, x is equal to 0, so dy by dx can be calculated by subbing into the gradient formula that we had previously. So that's 8 over 2 multiplied by 4 to the power of 3 over 2, and this simplifies to 1 half. So the equation of the tangent, pq, is simply y equals a half x. So at p, we can see that x is equal to negative 4 because p is vertically in line with that asymptote and then the y coordinate is equal to a half of that which is negative 2. So we have the coordinates of p. Now the last part of this asks us to use integration by substitution to find the exact area of the region enclosed by the curve, the tangent and the line x equals 5. So, if we look at the graph very carefully, here's the curve, here's the tangent, and here's the line x equals 5. So, we are being asked to calculate this region here. So, in order to do that, we are going to work out the area of the triangle. We're going to call this point here M. So, part 3, we're going to work out the area of the triangle OMQ and then subtract the area of the region underneath the curve, here this pink region, from that which will leave us with the value of the green region. So the first thing we need to do is work out what the coordinates of that point Q are. Now we can see at Q that x is equal to 5, as it's on the line x equals 5. Now q sits on the tangent, and the tangent has equation y equals a half x, so y is equal to 5 over 2 at q. So we can now work out the area of triangle OMQ. It's a half multiplied by the base length of 5 multiplied by the height of 5 over 2. So just in case you're in any doubt, that's this triangle over here. We've worked out the area of that, and that comes to a value of 25 over 4 square units. We're now going to work out the area, the pink region underneath the curve, and this is where we need to use integration by substitution. So we're working out the integral of x over the square root of x plus 4, and we're integrating between 0 and 5 with respect to x. So what is our substitution going to be here? Well, I'm going to say that u is equal to x plus 4, so du by dx is equal to 1, and then we can say that dx is equal to du. Now, we need to make sure we work on our limits as well. So if our lower limit x is 0, u would be equal to 4. If our upper limit x is equal to 5, u would be equal to 9. So my integral becomes the integral between 4 and 9 of x over the square root of u du. Now, of course, there's still an x in this integral, but that's absolutely fine. We can deal with that because, of course, u is equal to x plus 4, so that very clearly gives us the substitution that we can use to put this integral entirely in terms of u. We can say that x is equal to u take away 4. So in my numerator, I've got u minus 4, and in the denominator, I'm going to rewrite that as u to the power of a half, the integral with respect to u. So, before I carry out the integral, I'm going to divide both parts of the numerator by u to the power of 4. So that becomes u to the power of a half, subtract 4u to the minus a half, 
or with respect to u, and we can now perform the integral. So u to the power of a half, we end up with u to the 3 over 2, raising the power by 1. Dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. Take away, and we've got u to the power of a half here. Negative a half plus, a, plus 1 is a half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. There's already a 4 here, so we're going to end up with 8. And then, of course, we have limits of 4 and 9. And we're going to finish by substituting in those limits. And this gives us an answer of 14 over 3, which, of course, is the pink region underneath the curve, trapped between the curve and the x-axis. So the final answer to the question, and apologies, I can't quite fit this at the bottom of the page, which is where I would actually like to put this and would be the logical place at the end of this. The green area that we're looking for is equal to the area of the triangle, 25 over 4, subtract the area underneath the curve, 14 thirds, and that comes to an answer of 19 over 12 square units.